Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and Bitemout Live and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, April 2nd, 2021, and this is our weekly video. We do these every Friday. We talk about auction results and news, upcoming sales, what's happened uh, as far as prices go over on our, um, our, our newsletter page that we do up every week with the things that we find over on uh, eBay and Katawiki that uh, we think folks might find interesting. We try to only include things that are authentic antiques. This is the page. Most of you are very familiar with it. If you haven't subscribed to it, please do. And uh, what's been going on this week? A lot, actually. <laughs> uh, it's been a little crazy around here. By the way, if you hear some background noise, it's because there's it's spring in Gloucester. We're downtown in the center of the city in our building. And uh, the uh, construction crews are all out. They're replacing some sidewalks today up against our building, which is very loud. And uh, so if you hear some vibrations, it's... It's coming through the brick walls of this building. So uh, it's, they're, they're literally about 30 feet from where I'm sitting, it seems. At any rate, uh, what's been going on is the uh, the new Bitamount Live uh, selling site that we built and put up and launched a week or so, a little over a week ago, is doing uh, just fine. Uh, we're getting more and more sellers every day. I think we got about 80 vendors uh, that have registered and uh, uh, several hundred uh, buyers. And people are starting to populate the site. We've been working on it all this week with our uh, tech people. Uh, because I noticed it seemed to be that some of the things like images seem to be loading a little bit slowly for creating listings. So what we've done is we've uh, made some adjustments and uh, removed some things, added some things, and it's moving along a lot quicker now. The pages are loading just fine, and uh, there's a lot going on there. And uh, you're going to be seeing a number of things turning up next week. Uh, the seller over in the Netherlands has has uh, asked us to uh, give them a little bit of a hand, and we're going to be uh, getting their getting their things brought in, um, and uh, which is a lot of fun. Nice, some nice Chinese things and Japanese things. And uh, the other thing that we did uh, last week, and I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, we added this page to the um, uh, to, to the uh, uh, information uh, page on the drop down menu tips and, and so forth on pricing Asian art. I think you might find it useful where to get uh, information, how to go about pricing your objects and so forth. Because there's a, there's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing if you if you're used to collecting, you, you, you people uh, have one view of the market, and if you if you're learning, if you're becoming a seller, you have another view of the market. And uh, we talk a bit about uh, where to look for images, how to find comps, how to be realistic about pricing, uh, what prices you should ignore on certain things, uh, and, 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 and this sort of thing, uh, more common sense uh, uh, aspects and so forth. And uh, the, the page is fairly, fairly uh, uh, brief. It isn't too long. You can get through it in, a, in four, three or four minutes. But I think you might find it has some useful information in it. And as for the site itself, here's just some of the things that have been loaded uh, in the last week, a week and a half. Uh, more and more things are turning up. Some nice uh, female rose porcelain, some decent bronzes, some Japanese, a number of Japanese things. It's interesting to see Japanese things coming back. Some good Chinese exports, some satsuma, and so forth. So uh, uh, if you're a seller and you're thinking of putting some things up, please do. Set them up there. And uh, of course, the view is, is that the faster this site populates, um, because many of you are aware that our, the commission structure we set up is more favorable than any website in, in the, in, that I know of right now, other than running your own platform. Um, as far as commissions go, it's just 8% on the selling price of the object, not including shipping and taxes and all that. And uh, we spent a fair bit of time this week doing search engine optimization. And what we also did this week, which you, uh, I hope people pay attention to, we did a video early on um, when we first put it up a week and a half ago on creating listings. And something went wrong with it. So what I did was I redid it this week, creating fixed price listings here. And I added it. It's on the right sidebar menu of all of the pages that are off of the uh, help and information section. So if you go to any of these, you'll find that video. And and it goes through some elements about creating listings on the site that are very important uh, for you as a seller. And uh, a lot of it, uh, a big, big chunk of it has to do with how to search, en search engine optimize your listing as you create them. Um, it's a very important element and uh, it will do a great deal. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any other selling site that does this. And uh, we're putting it in your hands. We're going to go through and, and do some edits and, and, and work in the background to make sure it, it's done properly. But uh, check it out. 
All right, and uh, please join us. It's, it, there's a lot of good things going on. All right, now over to uh, what happened over on the global member pages this past week. Uh, a number of sales closed up. There was that uh, wonderful uh, auction. Uh, there were a couple of them, uh, one in Austria. And, uh, there was another one in Philadelphia. Material Culture had one, and they had some very nice Chinese carpets and, and Turkmen Central Asian carpets and textiles for those of you that love those. And... Um, what else has been going on here? Uh, Christie's has an online sale up right now that's on the global pages. And in it, I found this. This is terrific. Um, uh, I don't know. A lot of people don't, seem, don't necessarily are aware of this, but the Chinese used to do painted wallpaper for the export market. This is not a, a traditional screen. This is a wallpaper screen. And they would paint wallpaper. And it was exported in the 18th century. It was particularly popular in the West. And every once in a while, I remember years ago, there was a historic house near the Boston area up in a town called Marblehead. And they found rolls of uh, never used Chinese wallpaper from, uh, from the early 1800s. They did it in the 18th century as well, in the 1700s. And uh, it is quite elaborate, quite beautiful. And this is a set of wallpaper that's been screened. And it's absolutely terrific. And this is on the Christie sale. It's coming up in a, in a few weeks. You want to check it out. Closes in five days, not in a few weeks. Closes in five days. It's got a, It's got nine bids. It's up to six thousand dollars with a six to nine thousand dollar estimate, which I think is really reasonable. And this is a big screen. It's uh, over. Uh, it's uh, eight and a half feet tall. It's a good sized screen. So if, you, if you're looking for something great to put on a room in your house, this is a fabulous thing. And the colors are just lovely, very soft. These soft oranges and all these tones, I just love them. All right, now, um, the other thing that was on the global pages was uh, is this. There's a very nice auction coming up with uh, some, some decent Chinese rugs in it. This is a big rug, eight by 10 feet. If you collect Chinese art and Chinese antique furniture and so forth, and you don't have a Chinese rug in the room, I, 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 you, you're, gonna, you're missing out. You really do wanna have a Chinese carpet in your house several I have a lot of them but I, I just of course I, I love them so anyway and uh, this is uh, Nazmayal in New York is having a sale uh, it's got a five to eight thousand dollar estimate but um, I don't think he has much in the way of reserves on this stuff so uh, it's got one bit of a thousand dollars uh, if you could pick this rug up for under four grand, five grand, you're doing pretty well. Sales in, is, is in about a month away. They put their things up early so you get a good chance to look at it and make your measurements. But this is a really lovely Chinese rug. It's uh, probably early 20th century. Very nice, uh, legendary, the Chinese rugs are for their cobalt grounds. And then they use a yellow that tends to be very susceptible to light. And that's always been a, a, a sort of a, a thing of Chinese rugs. But beautiful uh, mid-blue field with bats and, and flowers and so forth all over it. And this is, this is a room-sized rug. It would look great if you, if, you, if you could put it in your own house. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that there was a sale. This was the uh, Austrian Rug Company. This was the uh, Austrian Auction Company had a sale. And uh, they had this very unusual, those of you that like Central Asian Turkmen um, uh, carpets will know this is an eagle, what they call it, eagle group uh, uh, ba bag face. They're really, they're, they're, they're a sub subgroup of the, of the, of the Turkmen's, which is, uh, they're part of the Yamud tribe and so on and so forth. The only thing that differentiates these between traditional Yamud uh, uh, shawls or bag face is saddlebag covers. This is not a big piece. This is only three by four feet or so. Uh, is is the, the way that the piece is uh, woven. It's a structural issue, that, and it's one of the ways they classify um, um, these different groups, and they call them the eagle groups underneath the Yomud banner, basically. But this was a very nice one and a very early one. Really good colors. Uh, the red looks nice. It glows sort of a ruby color. It's not that hot red, the synthetic dyes in it that nobody wants. Nice natural dyes, a bit aware to it, but it's very normal. This is a early 19, first half of the 19th century rug, roughly, uh, but very nicely done. And it did pretty well. It ended up selling for $5,180, uh, but very nice. A lot of good Turkmen rugs turned up in auction over in Europe. And then on to this one. This was also, was this the same sale? Yeah, it was same sale. Was this uh, uh, Kara Dashley uh, type of uh, Osmo look, a saddlebag rug. These are pentagonal bags. You know, extremely beautiful, very geometric, obviously. 
wonderfully woven. And uh, if you if you're a fan of Turkmen rugs, you know right away what this is. Just absolutely beautifully woven, very very fine. And the Turkmen's, of course, were um, uh, they were they were herdsmen, they were sheep herders and so forth, and they lived in tribal groups. Um, there were numerous Turkmen tribes, and um, they they intermarried, they swapped designs, and there was all kinds of things going on that affected their art. And uh, this was just a, a very very nice example. Uh, here's a picture of the back of it, and you can see how finely it's woven when you look at these little tiny rows of knots. It's a very, very finely woven example, and it did very well. It ended up selling for $15,303, again, woven in the first half of the 19th century, which makes it extremely desirable as a textile, as an Asian textile. And then next coming up, this is a sale that's coming up. Uh, is this at, uh, this is at Nazamayal again, is this very nice Afshar rug with these, this uh, S pattern uh, bead uh, lines down the middle. This is a room size rug, a very nice color, very pleasing, I ideal rug, you know, for the center of a room or something like that. It measures, uh, what is this, six by nine feet. Beautiful carpet, has no bids, five to $10,000 estimate, opening bid of a thousand. And again, if you, you know, if you could pick this rug up for under three or $4,000, you get a heck of a nice deal on your hands. Beautiful carpet. I, I really love rugs and carpets, as you can tell. I've been a rug bum for all, for 40 years. All right, now on to this, the uh, Chinese robe. This is a sale that's uh, taking place in about two weeks. They have very nice, it's on the global member page. This is on Knox News. This is Nadeau's down in Windsor, Connecticut has this nice looking Lei Qing dragon robe. Looks to be in very nice condition. Uh, uh, good quality uh, decoration on the dragons uh, right here. Good quality. Their cameras are a little out of focus. What I liked about it was that it has this basket, the classical 18th century Chinese uh, basket with fruit and flowers coming out of it in the center, which is a bit unusual for one of these. It's a bit unusual to see this. This is a very unusual pattern to see on one of these, these robes. But it's a nice looking robe. Uh, it has a couple of bids. It's up to $1,700. To me, it looks like a five to $7,000 robe. Nice looking thing. And then uh, coming up also is this very, very fine miniature gold inlaid on iron cabinet. It's Japanese. Um, this is taking place at Freeman's in, uh, in Pennsylvania. A beautiful little piece. The, the, Chi the Japanese are so good at inlaying metals. Um, really, really superb and, and had been at it for a long time. They had such great metalsmiths, of course, who made all the little fittings and, and, and material for, for, for samurai swords and for uh, uh, soldiers' outfits and all that sort of thing. And this is just a, a really lovely uh, a little cabinet with a, a beautiful uh, landscape on it and gilding and a little, I think a little bit of silver inlay and so forth. And the cabinet itself, of course, is made of iron. And then you have this beautiful handle on top. You don't think of iron as being an artistic metal all the time, especially looking like this when they're done with it. Um, uh, people would always assume that this must be bronze. It's not. They worked a lot with iron. And um, it's got a three to $5,000 estimate, which I think is perfectly fine. It's up to $1,800. And if you're a Japanese metal buyer, you might look into this. It is decent sizes. These are never huge. Uh, five by four inches. A little nice little cabinet. Very delicate. They're the, almost like something you'd, you'd keep a watch in or something, but just lovely quality. And then also coming up at, at, at Freeman's uh, very soon is this very nice Femi Ver decorated charger with a battle scene in the middle. Uh, it has a uh, two to three thousand dollar estimate, but it's pretty good size as I recall. This thing is uh, 14 inches it's charger. Uh, but very dramatically done, and the enamels on it all look to be in nice condition, which is good. And it's got this very gentle shaped rim going around the outside. But if you look at the enamels carefully, you don't see a lot of wear. The aubergine is a good color, and it's got this uh, very vibrant um, uh, uh, overglazed blue, which is quite nice instead of underglaze, and uh, very attractively done. And I love the horse on this, the, the way this, this aubergine horse is done, and then the, and the other horses as well, of course, and then the rocky outcroppings and so forth. It's a very nice looking dish, and it's big, 14 inches. That's a nice big plate. And it's estimated at two to 3,000, 2,500 to 3,500, which is perfectly reasonable. It has no bids yet. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that people are holding back. Uh, it's got an opening bid of $1,200, which is, of course, more than worth it. And um, um, 
you might want to get a hold of Freemans and, and uh, make some arrangements to do some bidding and talk to them about shipping. They have some very good Chinese things in there. If you get the global pages, you've already seen it all. Uh, we, we came across this sale a while ago, but uh, Freemans is, uh, is doing a very good job these days. All right, now over to what happened on the newsletter page last week. It was a pretty busy week. It wasn't crazy. I think I think a lot of people were sort of tied up with other things. Asia Week had just ended. Uh, there had been a bunch of auctions, so I expect to see some things coming on to uh, assorted sites, uh, hopefully, and uh, see how they do. At any rate, some of the things that did close last week was this, this very nice 18th century rabbit handle uh, 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 food, uh, terrain, uh, nicely decorated. This is an export example, obviously. But I love the crown finial on top. That's not something you see very often. Very unusual, shaped like a crown. And these beautiful little rabbit handles on the side instead of boar's heads or pigs or something else. And uh, this nice landscape, continuous landscape running around the body. Uh, very attractive and good photography here. Whoever did the pictures did a good job. Uh, there we go. Top, the top of it's nicely done. There's that that sort of crown shaped thing. It almost looks like a like a swollen garden barrel, but I think it's like a, a, like a coronet or something. Anyway, the 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 the, the uh, piece ended up selling for 420 euros, which I think is perfectly fine. Uh, the estimate was very modest, two, three to 350. Obviously, the seller uh, serious about doing business, and that's how it gets done. The importance of turning over money for dealers. Those of you that collect um, uh, will notice that certain dealers sell a lot more stuff than other dealers, and they keep growing. Growing and growing, and the reason is is that they're turning over their money. Uh, putting a lot of money, a good dealer will tell you, putting a lot of money into an object and then sticking to a high price when you could have turned it over, turned that money over three or four times in the same time period it took to sell it. The guy that flipped the pieces and put it out there, got it to collectors, built relationships, they're the ones that are very successful in this business. Uh, you, you're not, if you're a dealer, you're not running a museum. You want to sell the stuff, and that was a smart price that the guy put on that. And then, of course, there was this, the Guangzhou. This was also on Katawiki last week. Guangzhou period, Dragon and Phoenix Jar. This was very pretty. Uh, we had it in the newsletter page. Uh, I hope you saw it. Number, I got a couple of inquiries about it. I thought it looked terrific. I love the phoenix. I love the way the legs are coming down, almost like a ballet dancer, and the and then the tails and the tail feathers flying off, and then this very large bat coming ascending down upon it, so forth. Very interestingly done. This was a handsome, handsome jar, and the dragons seem to be meticulously done in iron red and gilding. Beautiful. Beautiful. There is a nice shot of it right there. Uh, lots of detail in, in, the, in the whiskers and the hair and the eyes and so forth. And then the scales were all perfectly drawn. Very, very nice. And there's some more bats. A bat in light blue. I like that. That's unusual. And uh, it ended up selling for 9,000 euros or about 12,000 US, more than double its uh, estimate. Again, smart estimate, very, very reasonable. Blew through it like Sherman through Atlanta. That's the way you want to do it. And then uh, what's over here? This is over on eBay. This was a great buy for somebody. This is a seller in Connecticut who sometimes puts things up with sort of high opening bids and high estimates. I, I can't understand his business model, but um, he put this up at a very reasonable estimate. It's a late Ming period, double Phoenix uh, uh, dish. Very nice, probably Swato, and uh, but nicely done. And it is sort of, in a way, they're sort of stylized like some Hung Mu plates um, a little bit, but uh, very nicely done. And uh, somebody picked it up reasonably for one bid of $275. One bid of $275, and this plate was, how big was this? It wasn't a, a little tiny saucer. It was 10 inches in diameter. So that was a pretty good buy. That was a nice buy for that. All right, and then over here to this. Uh, the Chinese ceramics, we had this in the, uh, in the, uh, 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 in the newsletter page because I like this book. I bought this book when it was new, and it came out around 1998. Or 97, 98, I think, and um, uh, 23 years ago. I remember buying it because Rose Kerr, of course, everybody knows, is a brilliant writer, Victorian Albert Museum uh, 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 person, and, and does writing for the for, for the, some of the auction houses that use her for things. She's really brilliant, and uh, this is a very nice, easy to read book, and uh, they they they're not terribly expensive for a V&A book. Um, it, it, for some reason, I don't know why, this ended up selling for just 43 dollars. It's worth its weight. I have a copy. I've dog-eared the thing. Um, it's nicely illustrated. Uh, this is how it looks inside, uh, hardback. And, uh, uh, but her writing is so clear and concise and, and just right to the point. Um, and if you have a book like this and you actually read it, 
uh, you'll learn a great, great deal. You really will. You'll really learn a great deal. These are the kind of books you want to you want to have. And these are just for porcelains of the Qing Dynasty coming from the hand of somebody that knows the stuff very well. So 43 bucks. How can you beat it? Great book to take on a plane. All right, now this, onto the uh, 18th century jar. The, the seller had this up. This is Avion's Antiques um, in British Columbia, up in Canada. They listed, this was only a six inch jar, and they had listed it um, as, I think, as they said, a, a, a early 19th century or 19th century pot. And I took a look at this. I put it in the newsletter. I don't think this was, I think it was an early 18th century or mid 18th century example. Look at that foot rim. Um, that doesn't look like a 19th century foot to me at all because it was quite a bit older than he suspected. The top of it as well. It's a little bit gunked up around here, but the uh, iron oxide in this, this area here looks very good to me. And I love the dragon. It had a Ming dragon on it instead of a Qing dragon. Uh, Ming dragons always look sort of goofy and cartoonish. And if you look at the Wan Li and late Ming dragons, this is what they look like. Uh, and this was done in the same manner. Uh, some people may have thought it was Ming. Um, I don't think it was. I think it was an early 18th century jar. But very, very attractive. Four-claw dragon on it. There's the pearl flying away and the dragon chasing after it and so forth. Ended up selling for $1,525. And this wasn't a big jar. I think it was six or seven inches tall. It was fairly small. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, the, the seller, I, I, know the, I know the seller. He's a good guy. Uh, six inches tall. Uh, he said it came out of a, a local estate, I believe him. And um, he had another jar of almost identical size that also did a Canton-style jar that did, uh, uh, I think, around around 1100 or something. Same sale. Very nice, though. That was a good-looking pot. I liked it. This, I think, was the, the boat that sailed that everybody missed. Uh, this was a great carving. Unfortunately, in photography, when you're taking pictures of things, um, if you're shooting something that's dark, don't give it a light background because you end up with this problem where you can see the background more clearly than you can see the face of the of the immortal here. And this was a very, very lovely 15-inch tall 19th century Qing Dynasty carving. And they used the carver very cleverly used the graining of the wood to form some of the texture of his robes. Um, and it's very, this thing is it's almost impossible to see this thing unfortunately, but I know what it is. And uh, somebody picked this up for nothing. Uh, this is a nice big figure, beautiful quality carving all the way down, good patina, and so on and so forth. I love the way the robes are flowing down. Uh, this could be like an early early 18, early 1800s uh, piece. Went for just $156. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I saw that. I thought this thing will bring six to eight hundred all day long. And this was a seller over in the UK. Migulari had this up. Uh, if you have a thing like this, shoot it on black cloth and illuminate it nicely, and you'll really be able to see it. This was an absolutely wonderful thing. Really wonderful. Check the details and always check the size because sometimes people see these these figures and they just assume that they're only six or eight inches tall. That's the other thing, the dangerous assumption. Uh, if you're a seller, make your primary shot and put something in it that people can instantly identify by its size. Like, uh, you know, we, we like we, we've said many times, we just use a traditional bottle of wine. Uh, an empty bottle of wine or something uh, as, just to show, give people a sense of how big something is. And I think maybe this lost some interest because one, it was too dark. The pictures are too dark. And two, it, it's, it reads as a, a figure that's only six or seven inches tall. But at any rate, that was a great buy. I love that. And then the stirrups, the Edo period Japanese stirrups from Mark Wahlberg. This is arts on sunlink.net in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. And uh, these were up for a week and a half. We discussed them when they first went up. I thought these were really good stirrups. I really liked these. I thought they were beautifully done. And the lacquer was in very, very good condition on them. And I thought they'd probably bring a thousand or twelve hundred dollars because they were just the, the lacquer was so good. There was a set of stirrups that just sold a few weeks ago that had all the lacquer bashed off of it, and it brought four, three or four or five hundred somewhere in there. Here's a here's a pair. With the, with the lacquer on it, and it still has all the little inlay elements going here and here and here. A nice, nice pair. And uh, somebody picked them up for $518. I think that was a great buy. 17, he dates them as 17th to 18th century. Um, uh, and Mark, Mark knows Japanese stuff as anybody on the Internet. 
Um, he knows Chinese stuff very, very well too, but he was very strong in the Japanese world. And uh, if he says that's the date, that's the date. And uh, 518 bucks, somebody got a great buy. These things are fantastic. And then also, somebody got a great buy on this. This, to, to the eye, sort of looked like silvered copper or something, or two metals put together um, and so forth, because it was so tarnished. This was silver. This was a silver box. Uh, uh, Japanese. Here's a picture of the inside. You can, see, you can see the silver. Here's another picture of the liner inside of it. Here's the top of it. All of this, this beautiful work in here. And somebody grabbed this thing for just $202. It's late Meiji, possibly show, uh, Taisho period, but beautiful quality. Just lovely, lovely quality. You get a sense of the size by the hand in the picture. That's always a good way to take pictures. Just put your hand, if somebody, preferably with good cuticles, put their, picture, their hands in the, in the picture to give a sense. And uh, a very nice buy. Somebody got a good buy on that, you know. Leave a bid. I know I know some of you probably looked at that and said, oh, that's gonna bring six or 800 bucks. Well, somebody got it for $202, good going. And then over to this. Last week, remember, we had five of these panels. Um, these are from some sell, a seller out in California. And uh, there seems to be a couple of sellers that turned up with these out there. Um, there may have been a collection that got broken up or somebody had some and they just sold them. I don't know what the story is, but there were five of them last week and I believe they brought around $3,300 or so. And uh, then this one turned up, uh, same, same type of material, beautifully done, nice old one, gilded. And um, we thought would probably, you know, now you know the price, what it'll bring. Because if five of them brought 3300 3, what will this one bring? And we thought, you know, five to seven ended up selling for a little over 700 a little above our estimate. We tend to be a little conservative at times. Ended up selling for $727. And this was a, a seller out in San Diego, a state wonder. And I, I don't, I don't, I, I, we've seen these things before, but I don't, I don't actually know them personally. And this was a good size, too. It was 25 inches tall. Nice big panel. These are, those are great hanging on walls, by the way. You can put lights behind them, put LED uh, string lights behind them and illuminate them, get them set right, and they can really be very atmospheric and quite elegant. And then on to this, this uh, Yongshen, uh, probably late Yongshen period export dish. The seller had is, uh, thought that perhaps it was Chen Lung, uh, maybe being conservative. I don't think it is. I think it's a Yongshen dish. But beautifully done, nice enamels. The colors were good and strong. And these, these red enamels here, all of these, there was no chipping. Because sometimes these thick red enamels can get chipped. And the, the whiteness of the porcelain was very, very good. And lots of nice shadings of turquoise and lime green. And so forth with sprinkles of aubergine all through it. Just a nicely assembled decoration. Very, very attractive. It had 21 bids, sold for $290. This was a seller over in Stockholm. And this is a seller I'm not familiar with. Um, uh, maybe somebody out there knows him. Uh, I don't know. Plain Trumsab. Pl plain, plain, plain Trumsab. I don't know them. Um, I, I did check their pages though. They sell a lot of good European ceramics and they somehow they got involved in some Chinese. They, uh, they knew what they were doing um, pretty much. And uh, that was a good buy. That was a nice looking thing. And now on to this. This was in the newsletter page and I put it in because it was misidentified. And, um, and I, I know a lot of you instantly will recognize it as being misidentified. They had listed this as a Chinese dish. And of course it's Japanese and um, um, we'll, and we'll, those of you who don't know why it's Japanese and not Chinese, I will get to that in a second. But at any rate, it was very attractive, and they listed it as a 20th century Chinese dish, and it isn't. It's a it's a Meiji period Arita dish, and uh, if you want to know how you, you can tell that, is you just have to turn the thing over. Here's the back of it. All right, and what do you see here? One of the one of the things that always differentiates Chinese from Japanese is the is this is the, if you if you don't know anything else is is the Chinese always if they use a, a circle on the back in blue they use two of them and they tend to be centered away from the foot rim. The Japanese had a tendency in in Arita and uh, in, in Seto and so forth they just put one single line at the base of the foot rim when they did these, okay? And this is just one single line. You can see where his, his pen wobbled a little, so it becomes a double line there just for a second, but that was an accident, because he was running his, his, you know, his, his brush around it to apply it. But at any rate, this was not a Chinese dish. This was a Japanese dish. Here's another shot of it here. Here it is here, and it ended up doing pretty well. It ended up selling for $202, which is about the right price for um, uh, 
a, a Japanese Arita dish of that period. Very attractive. And he had called it probably 20th century China. Um, I think, you know, it was an honest misinterpretation. I get inqui- We get inquiries about these these blue and white dishes that have that single line or next to the foot rim all the time. And uh, you can see if you, if, you, if you have a dish like that and you're not sure if it's Chinese or Japanese and you're thinking of submitting it through the identification assistant uh, arrangement on Bitamount, a Bitamount site, um, save yourself the $12. It's Japanese if that's all you really want to know. Okay, that single line tells you everything you need to know. All right, and then over here to this, this big Femi Ver jar, very attractive. Again, here's that basket pattern, just like we saw a little while ago over on the rope. There it is repeated here. It's a ubiquitous pattern starting in the 18th century and was used right through the 19th century. This, of course, is a 19th century uh, uh, jar, but quite attractive. We've seen these this style before, slightly slight variations almost every time. And uh, on the back of it, it is marked, it looks like it has a baby, what is this? Uh, let's see the mark on here. Uh, I'm not sure what the heck that mark is. I'd have to look that up. It looks like it's a sort of a, maybe a possible pseudo uh, 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 Chinois uh, mark or something. But at any rate, it ended up selling for, uh, seven, he calls it a Kangxi mark. I don't think that was, but at any rate, uh, $710, which is about right for these. We've had, seen these before in, in, in this style and size, and they all seem to go in the, in the 600 Six six fifty to nine hundred dollar range, pretty standard. Nice looking thing though. And then over to this, this was something that Ancient Legends also had. It uh, a very nice Chinese Amari a bowl, twenty eight centimeters, eighteenth century. It looks to me to be a Kung Chi example. Um, nice underglaze, deep underglaze blue. The gilding looked to be all in very very nice condition. The way the flowers are done, the iron red decoration looks really good to me. Here's a picture of the inside. Um, lots of gilding and stock. Look at all the gilding, all in beautiful shape. No wear to it anywhere. And usually, when the, this particular pattern, this Amar, Japanese Chinese Amari pattern, rather, uh, by the time they got here, these gilded flowers are often very worn here, here, and here, and so forth. And this one wasn't at all. It had a nice looking uh, 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 sides to it. There's the foot rim on it, nice and big and white, and so forth. And um, ended up selling for nine hundred and fifty-five dollars, which looks fine to me. And then uh, over here to this was this. This is a really nice 19th century uh, covered bowl. Uh, this is a really, really pretty one. Uh, this was pretty right there. Famille Rose, very simple and elegant. Uh, nicely done. No mark on the base. Just a, this again, there's that double circle and so forth. Uh, but, but very nice quality enameling. Very, very nice quality enameling. Here's a picture of the cover. Uh, beautifully done. And uh, ended up selling for $880 with 27 bids. A lot of people like that. And then this. This was a beast. I think this was a pretty good buy. This is a Republic period uh, court official in Femi Rose, but it was over two feet tall. These figurines were made in a wide range of sizes, almost from like six or seven or eight inches all the way up to 30. Even th- I've, um, I forget who it was. Um, was it? Chamberlain Antiques or somebody, they had one that was like 40 or 45 inches tall a year or so ago. Crazy. They made these in a wide variety of sizes. But this was a very nice one, very strongly decorated, lovely face. I love the face on this guy. He looks so happy. There you get a better sense of the uh, the size of it. It's a big piece. And um, look at the face. I love the face with a natural hair whisker coming out of his chin. They used natural hair on, on these figures. And there might have been something up here protruding from those, probably maybe more hair at one point. But at any rate, it brought seventeen hundred and thirty thirteen dollars sixty five centimeters tall or about about twenty four inches. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. And uh, then over here to this, this was the ceramics and collectibles guys. Uh, the, they're known as Shangri-La Antique in uh, the Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam. And they had this very nice pine tree, uh, Chan Chi period, uh, 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 blue and white dish. And I like the rim on this plate a lot. It's sort of interesting. The, f- the fun part of these pieces are, is that they did a lot of playing around, a lot of variations. These were made for the in China for the Japanese market. And uh, I, lo- I love the cloud, the clouds up here. And you can see the cloud, this is the, sh- the cloud here and you can see the rain coming out of the cloud and in this way the rain is going up 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 the cloud somehow any rate it's a great border decoration i love the gnarly pine trees the craggled old wise pine coming up out of this big big protruding rock uh very nice 340 bucks not bad at all had some minor fritting and so forth but nothing uh, serious 
And then over here to this, the Kangxi fluted rim uh, saucer with the peacock on the rock or the pheasant on the rock. It's a famous pattern. You see this often. The, 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 the flat top uh, natural rock with a, uh, a pheasant on top of it. Beautiful flowers. Very nicely molded all the way around. The enamels look to be in good condition. It, this was a saucer, as I recall. It was around seven inches or so tall, seven or so inches in diameter. Ended up selling for 572 euros, which is, you know, 650 bucks roughly or something. You'd have to calculate it. All right, now what's coming up? There's a few things still coming up this week. There's other stuff we're going to see. Uh, Super Shrink has uh, this will be selling out this wonderful um, uh, Wang Hing uh, tea set with the uh, flowers all over it. We talked about it last week because I thought it was so attractive, and um, it's up to it's gone up a bit. It was it was a thousand or so. It's gone up to seventeen or twelve hundred. It's gone up to it's at seventeen hundred and thirty dollars. We'll see how that goes. It closes in six hours. It closes later today. And uh, then also this, a very nice uh, marked uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese silver bowl. This is Carpet Diem Antiques. Um, very, very nice looking thing there in, in, in the UK. There we go. Beautifully done. I didn't look the mark up. Remember, you can always look up the marks um, over on uh, the uh, uh, reference section on bitamount.com. And now the reference section also is linked off the, the Bitamount Live site under references. And you can go look up silver marks. They're all in alphabetical order. That wonderful, wonderful silver book. And uh, we'll see where this goes. It's up to $359. It closes later on today. I suspect it's going to probably jump up another three or 400 anyway. And um, that's about it. Uh, it's been a pretty good week. A lot of action going on. And um, I think what we're trying to put together, I saw something. We're trying to put together a video for uh, the results for Doyle's. And uh, we're going to touch on Doyle's and uh, uh, the uh, Bonhams had some sales um, or during Asia Week. We're going to go through theirs. They had some nice things. Uh, Doyle's did a good, a very good job. They got some nice items. And um, I was talking to somebody over in Europe yesterday, and there is a uh, – uh, they haven't announced it publicly, so I'm not going to say anything who it is or where it is, but there's a major – major couple of pieces of porcelain coming up in the EU at one of the one of the better auction houses not one of the majors not not Christy Sellers of Bonham another one very very good auction house uh, what sound to be blockbuster uh, two porcelains in particular and uh, we're going to we're going to talk we're going to get more information on it when when they're ready to talk about it the sales not uh, ready quite yet but uh, spectacular finds, two spectacular finds in porcelain. All right, if you enjoy the videos, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. We do these every week, sometimes twice a week, as you know. And uh, join us at bitamount.com. And if you're looking to sell things, uh, try out uh, Bitamount Live. Um, we're working on it. It's, gonna, it's a work in progress for everybody. Uh, we want it to be fantastically successful for everyone. We are not going to mess with it. We're not going to change things. We're going to, I mean, we'll change things that help. But it's, this is not a fee-based enterprise. This is something we're doing to, to get everybody to do more business and not be stuck to the whims of uh, the, the big, big auction houses every time. That, I just heard there's some other huge change now coming in the antique category on eBay. There was something on e-commerce bites about it the other day. You go look it up. Um, they're, they're changing and adding and you know, squeezing again. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Everybody that sells anything, they got to get a chunk of it. The, the eBay's gotten a little silly. And I don't know what they're thinking, but at any rate, we all, everybody know everybody has their eBay stories. Um, but at any rate, Catawiki seems to be doing going along pretty well, and um, uh, the Bitamount Live site is coming along just fine. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Spring is here, even though it snowed last night here. By the way, I mean, this is hilarious. Um, uh, four days ago, it was 65 degrees here. Sun. The ocean looked like a lake, silver blue. Uh, spring is here. The jonquils are popping out. Uh, we had the landscaper over having some work done we're always doing work to that house uh, we're actually adding um, we're redoing the third floor this time this year and uh, doing some landscaping and it was sunny beautiful and uh, last night it was back down in the 20s and it snowed last night um, so there we are all right it's in New England uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you all next week we'll try to get that other video up too as well all right bye bye <laughs>